Hello and welcome to another Mansion of Madness painting video. Before I get started, please hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more painting videos. All right, today we are painting Finn Edwards. This is gonna be the last investigator of the Streets of Arkham expansion. As always, I prime the figure in Mechanica Stranded Gray using Citadel's primer. And then the first area I'm gonna start with is the skin, which I'm gonna use medium flesh tone from Vallejo. I'm using the same skin technique that I've used for all these sort of fair skin investigators thus far. Next up, I'm tackling the shirt, and basically I'm going to base it in a Thurian gray, and largely I'm picking sort of an off-white color because sticking plain white onto surfaces is kind of a pain, and so this gives me a little bit of a leeway and I can build up the highlights a little easier without having to go too crazy. Next up, I'm gonna tackle the rope hanging around his right arm. I'm using Screaming Skull for this. It's going to look a little sort of yellowy, off-white color. Um, and this is kind of a tricky area to get. I'm using pretty thin paint here, so it's gotta take a couple layers to get really a nice base coat on here. Here I noticed that I missed the cuffs on the shirt sticking out of the jacket, so I just went back and did them real quick. Next up is going to be his jacket, which I'm going to use Olive Gray from Vallejo. For the hair, I'm going to use Rhinox Hide. The pants I mixed Steel Legion Drab with the Olive Gray, and I would say perhaps about a 3 to 1 ratio, but maybe even a little less than that. It might be 3 to about half a brush of Olive Gray. Um, really, you're going to have just basically a very brown colored pants with a slight green tint to it. Also lastly, for the shoes, I decided to go with the olive gray. At this point, do any sort of touch up, anything along those lines. The bottle, we're actually gonna save for last. As for the washes, for the shirt, I used a known oil wash, but thin down a little bit just so that I don't have to overly highlight the shirt. Going to use Seraphim Sepia on the skin. Agrax Urshade will tackle the pants, the rope, and the hair. I use Cecilia Green for the jacket and the shoes. After that's dried, we'll tackle the highlights here. We're basically going to do kind of what we've done before in which we will do the skin first. For the skin, I typically do basically a gradient from our darkened base tone now back to our base tone and then back to our new highlights. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of go over most of the skin again back in our original base tone. After that, I will use Kids Left Flesh in order to highlight a few areas, the bridge of the nose, the forehead, tips of the fingers, maybe the palm, just a bunch of areas like that. And lastly for the skin, I will use Flayed One's Flesh to again pick those highlights out but just in smaller areas so maybe just the tip of the nose the very tips of the fingers just smidge of the palm
Once all your highlights are complete and you're happy with the way they look, you'll notice that they are, of course, a little over bright. The way I like to fix this and sort of to smooth out the transition and the gradient itself is to use a technique known as glazing. I've used this several times before on basically all the fair skin miniatures, so I'm just going to kind of go over it quickly here in case this is your first episode. You're going to take seraphim sepia and you're going to water it down so it's pretty much almost water with a little bit of yellow in it. And then you're going to go back over the skin that has been done but not like a wash. You're not gonna let any of this pool in any sort of area. It's just going to tone back your highlights and give sort of a yellowish sheen over everything. And you'll notice kind of a nice gradient once everything's dry. As for the highlights of the shirt, basically we just take now an actual white, and we don't need to do a third and gray anymore, and basically just pick out the roughs and the folds that we really want to have be pure white. So this could be his collar, the tips of the things, the sleeves, that sort of thing will be sort of more pure white. Next up, I'm gonna tackle the jacket. For the jacket, I took our original base coat, put in a smidge of white into the mix and basically just gave us a slightly lighter color. And then I used this to pick out like the tops of the pockets, the tops of the shoulder, maybe some of the folds on the back. If you'd like, you could add even a little bit more white to this mix and pick out some smaller highlights to give even more definition to the figure. I'm going to use the same color mixes also for the shoes. As for the pants, I took the original mix and basically again added just a little bit of white to that mix and gave ourselves a lighter color. I went over certain areas like the knees, some of the folds near the bottom of near his shoes, and kind of the backs of the legs a little bit. The hair is Rhinox Hyde mixed with just a little bit of white. And then I tackled the rope itself. The wash does a good job of picking out the details of this, so you don't really need to do a whole lot, but I went back with Screaming Skull and just sort of picked out, highlighted some of the knots as needed to make it stand out just a little bit more. And with all that complete, Basically, the figure is almost complete. Now we're going to do the glass bottle. Admittedly, this is actually one of the first times I've actually attempted to paint sort of a glass bottle. I think I did okay here, but there's maybe a few things I could have done slightly better, which I'll explain as I go along. Basically, we're going to base coat the entire bottle in Caliban green. Of course, this color scheme is going to be only for green colored glass bottles, but the principles are going to basically apply. You just have to figure out which colors to use if you're going to go for brown. Once that has dried, we will start with Warp Stone Glow to basically pick out a line where some liquid inside of this bottle is going to be. One mistake I feel I made here is that I made the basically the slope of the line of liquid maybe a little bit too sharp, so it could be smoothed out a little bit more. Once you've picked out a line and you're happy with it, then you're going to take moot green and pick out a small thin sliver up at the top. I feel like my line here that I'm doing is maybe just slightly too thick and it would have been good for me to go back over with some warp stone glow to kind of smooth out the transition there. You can then use pure white to make this line look even more noticeable. Then 
Then before we put a protective coating over the figure, I'm going to do the eyes. I use a very small brush for this typically. I use ivory to pick out the eye itself and then some black to pick out the pupils. Lastly, one more thing before we put our predictive coat on is we're going to paint the base itself, Mechanicus Standard Gray. Once that comes complete, you put a protective coat on it, and then you can optionally put some Ard Coat on the glass bottle itself. The reason I do Ard Coat after is because I use a non-gloss varnish, and if I do it before, usually this non-gloss varnish will actually get rid of the glossiness. So to do it after, you'll keep the glossy look of the bottle. And that does it for this video. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment below. Hope you enjoyed this. There will be a couple more Mansions of Madness videos coming and a bunch of more other stuff in the future. So talk to you soon. Bye.